look at the markets now with Yannick Node, who's Portfolio Manager at Glen Devon King Asset Management. Joining us here in the studio, Dan still with us, of course, our guest host. So, um, France and Austria 10-year uh, CDS spread is what we're looking at to start with. Why have you picked this particular pairing? Yeah, France and uh, Austria used to trade more or less at the same level. I mean, when France was still AAA, they were trading in line or even slightly tighter than Austria. What we saw in the last few months, it's now France is underperforming Austria. Uh, first of all, because it was downgraded uh, earlier this year, and because recently we had quite uh, some quite bad uh, uh, economic numbers. We had a number yesterday of the uh, industrial production year on year is down 1.9 percent, unemployment is at 10 percent. It's the all-time high since October 89. Uh, public spending is over 56 percent of GDP. So we had quite a lot of uh, bad number out of France, and on top of that, we have a French election coming on the 22nd of. Uh, April. Uh, both candidates, main candidates, don't really want to talk about the economy. I think the market is a bit uh, nervous about that. And you have quite a lot of uh, extreme, uh, extreme right and extreme left uh, being. Uh, uh, having very good number in the polls. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, we should probably point out that you are also standing um, in, the fr in French elections, not, not to be president, of course, that would be uh, probably a bit ambitious at this stage, That's it. but um, you're, you're standing up here for um, the uh, Europe du Nord, which is one of the yes. constituencies in the French Parliament. Exactly. For, for us. Just t tell, us, tell us a bit about... In, about in June this situation. year, for the first time, a bit like what we have uh, in Italy already, uh, 11, uh, uh, 11 members of Parliament will be elected from, uh, from French people living abroad. Uh, there will be 11 constituencies, one of which uh, being uh, f uh, Northern Europe, uh, and they will represent French people. There's 2.5 million French people living abroad, and they will be represented in the parliament. It's what? fascinating, isn't it? I mean, there's 11 seats going to be up for grabs. So yes. just tell us how it works. Which party you're, you're, you're aligned to for start? I'm representing the Modem, which is the French equivalent of uh, the Lib Dem. It's called the Mouvement Democrate, so it's uh, between left and right. Uh, it's, uh, François Bayrou is uh, around 13% in the poll right now. And in, in UK and in uh, Northern Europe, uh, the, uh, this movement has been pretty strong uh, in the last uh, five years. So let's pick a, a very large French town, South Kensington. Why should they all vote for you down there? <laughs> well, uh, the, my, my manifesto and the manifesto of uh, François Bayrou is it's all about education and it's the number one worry for it's French. It's a fantastic education system. Talking of South Kent, the Lycée Charles de Gaulle is one of the most successful fi uh, institutions in London education. Yes. I know so many people trying to find French relatives so they can get their kids mm -hmm. into the Lycée. If you, can, if you can get into it, I mean I receive email every day <laughs> yeah, exactly. from parents saying that how can I make sure that my kids can enter the, the school. First of all, it's, it's, it's expensive and second of all, it's very, very hard to get into. So that's a very, very big worry. I mean, if you want a, a French export to grow, you need to have a very dynamic population abroad. And French people, uh, they would, I mean, they will move abroad easier if they have a better access to French education. I abroad. should ask you an interesting disclosure. Do you live in South Kent as well? No, I don't. I live in uh, North London. Oh my goodness me, the only <laughs> Frenchman. Uh, let's move on. We've got some more uh, technical analysis. Uh, yes, we should probably get back on track, shouldn't we? Um, I I'm sure we can talk to you about the uh, elections yes. another time as well. Uh, but uh, you've brought in a, a Danish chart too. What's uh, the, the T-bill yield? Yes, basically yesterday uh, the uh, Danish government issued a four-year bond at 0.63%. So Danish government is benefiting a lot from all this Eurozone crisis. The cost of borrowing is getting lower and lower. Now the short-term bills are getting close to zero. Uh, back in January, we saw that in Germany, uh, Germany was able to issue T-bill at minus 0.122% uh, uh, for six months uh, T-bill. I expect uh, to see negative interest rate in Denmark uh, this year. Dan, I just want to ask you about this, actually, because we talk a lot about the ills of the Euro and the Eurozone and uh, the, the policy directed at Northern Europeans, the ills it's created for Southern Europe. I just wondered for you, we, we're talking about the Danish yield there as well, the benefits it should have created for uh, Northern Europe, and I guess Denmark's a country we don't talk about anywhere near as much as we should, but mm -hmm. the success or, or otherwise of their economy based on European policies. Well, I think the benefit, you know, not just for them, but even for Germany and the UK, for that matter, you know, being safe havens and having interest rates so low. If you I mean, if you think about the UK's budget, you know, one reason they've been able to beat their targets is because they're paying much less in interest on what they've had to issue in terms of debt. So there is this kind of ancillary benefit. You probably rather have higher growth as opposed to low interest rates, but it is in that way uh, not necessarily so bad for them. So policy is working for Northern Europe. 
Uh, absolutely. And I think in general, I mean, if we think about all the kind of extraordinary measures by the central banks, you know, ECB and Bank of England and the Fed, I mean, it was, I'd say, necessary and justifiable at the time because of this, the scope of the crisis that they were facing. But there are now certainly a lot of unintended consequences that we're having to deal with, some beneficial and, of course, some not. Sticking with Northern Europe, but in a, a corporate sense, we were talking about Nokia earlier and uh, speculating over how far the stock has to go down before it represents a decent entry point or if it just goes down to zero. What, was the, uh, what, what do your charts indicate? Um, my chart is about credit. So it's the credit risk associated with, uh, with Nokia. I mean, as, as, as we saw earlier, I mean, the, the stock has, has had a very, very poor performance. Uh, the credit is not much better. I mean, Nokia is a triple B uh, minus uh, company. It's not trading like a junk uh, company. It's trading like a double B, uh, double B company. Uh, I think it's very difficult to find what is the entry point because you don't want to catch a falling knife. But I think now, if you, uh, with the CDS at those levels, either the CDS or they have a 2014 bond, uh, could be very good value. You have to keep in mind that Nokia has a net uh, cash position of 4.9 billion euro. I mean, this cash position is going down quickly because it was at 5.6 billion back at the end of 2011. It was 6.4 billion uh, in March 2011, so they're burning a lot of cash, but they're still sitting on a, a very, very, very uh, big uh, cash position. So all in all, if they manage to reduce their burn rate, they should be able to, uh, to, continue, uh, to continue to operate. And at least on the, uh, for, credit, uh, for the creditor or for a bondholder, I think there is good value. Just noting today, there's been seven broker downgrades, downgrades yes. for Nokia, so that's right across the board. Brokers are really coming out and saying their price targets have got to be moved lower. The news that we had out yesterday about its key device, the Lumia 900, yes. that there was a software bug in this. And this is the device they're hoping to take on Apple with. How disappointing do you think that is, and does it really damage Nokia's fortunes? Yes. They were supposed to sell, uh, the, according to analysts, they were supposed to sell between 3, mil uh, 3 million and 3.9 million uh, Lumia and set, mm -hmm. and so far they're selling only two million with heavy discounts and because the margin is a negative three percent for the uh, device and services so division. they're giving this device away now they're not giving it away i mean it's well, not, it's not well. like the uh, it's not like the uh, the books it's yeah. not for free yet <laughs> they're not giving it away but they don't make enough money out of it uh, the key uh, the key is uh, would it get better in the next few months? Uh, they will be able to reduce the burn rate. They're sitting on such a, a large amount of cash that they should be able to turn around things. They should have at least two years to turn around things. Yanni, I've just, um, I'm fascinated by your political aspirations. I've just been onto your website, um, Yannick Node, which is his name basically, and I'm looking at Kijasui, your, who I am, whatever, and I've, I've just found a first statement in one of your letters. I don't think it's going to make you popular with some French voters. Uh, I'll say it in French as well. En premier lieu, uh, la crise économique actuelle n'est probablement pas uniquement la cause des banques. Yes. Not necessarily, not just the cause of the banks, this economic crisis. That's not going to make you popular in France. Well, there's banker bashing <laughs> all over the world and especially in France. Uh, people have to understand that, at least in Europe, a uh, bank obviously had the uh, fair share in the crisis. Yeah. But the, uh, the debt bad, of the... But the French voters are going to be up in arms about that uh, one. The debt of the government, especially in continental Europe, uh, uh, compounded the effect of... Uh, uh, the uh, banking crisis. Yeah. I'll tell, tell you what though, that what? French accent's not going to make you popular in France, is <laughs> 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 very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, Yannick now, thank you very much. Really good luck. Let us know how you get on and um, you. we hope um, you uh, succeed in all your political aspirations. Uh, Yannick Node, uh, Portfolio Manager, Glen Devon King Asset Management.